Mindset, a daily dose of practical wit and wisdom with a professional educator and trainer, Amazon best-selling author, United States Marine, television and radio host, Paul G. Markle. Each episode will focus on positive and productive ways to strengthen your mindset and help you improve your relationships, career goals, and overall well-being. Please welcome your host, Paul G. Markle. Hello and welcome back to the Morning Mindset Podcast. I am your host, Paul Markle. And today we are going to talk about reinventing the wheel. Uh, how many times have you been told, whether it was in a, a professional standpoint, a business standpoint, or whether you're in school or what have you, to not reinvent the wheel? We've often been admonished or we are often admonished by others not to reinvent the wheel. And what does that mean? Well, if you're a young crumb cruncher and you've never heard that for some crazy reason, don't try and reinvent the wheel or we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Simply means we don't need to overthink it. Or a solution already exists, such as the wheel, right? If the solution already exists, then use the existing solution. Don't try and come up with a new one when the solution already exists. That can be very good advice. However, you know, and we do sometimes we, we try to we make things harder than they need to be. A lot of times that's where the, you know, the wheel advice comes in. Nonetheless, however, also, <laughs> can we make a better wheel? Well... I mean, if you if you look at it from a a, a a a literal standpoint, let's say the original wheel was made of what? You know, we, we all love to see the the cartoons or or the movies or what have you, where they uh, portray a caveman with a chisel and hammer, like cavemen had chisels and hammers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure cavemen didn't have steel chisels and steel hammers or whatever. But all right, say so it's a rock. They're carving a wheel out of stone, right? The original, you know, the wheel. And then someone says, you know, we don't need to make that out of stone. That's way too hard. Let's make it out of wood. So they made wooden wheels. And then someone came along and said, you know, wooden wheels are nice and they work, but wouldn't it be better if we use some type of a cushioning material, and rubber and spokes and air and all that. So it is true that, you know, the wheel was invented, I don't know, 2,000 years ago or 2,500 years ago or 3,000, I don't know, a long time ago when Heraclitus was walking around. They invented, they had wheels, right? But the wheels of 1,000 years ago and the wheels of today are different because the wheels of today are more advanced, now, you may be confronted with a problem for which you already have a solution, or there may be a tool that seems to work pretty well, but the tool could be better. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the, that's the, that's the uh, not the, the solution, the conundrum that you will find yourself in. Sometimes what people will advise you, like, hey, you're thinking too hard. Don't reinvent the wheel. You say, okay. But that's when you need to ask yourself. You need to be genuinely honest with yourself and say, are we really trying to reinvent the wheel? Are we trying to come up with a solution when a solution already exists? Are we wasting our time? Or, on the other hand, are we trying to take an existing solution, an existing tool, and make it better? To make improvements upon it. Now, you might be saying, well, every time I step forward and I do this, I'm always trying to make improvements. And that's great if you are. But I will also say this. Many times when people say, don't reinvent the wheel, or at least in my own personal experience, when I've been admonished not to reinvent the wheel, it wasn't because it was impossible to find another solution. And it wasn't because we could not make improvements in the, in the way we were doing things. It was because the person who told me, don't reinvent the wheel, 
did not want to put forth any effort to make improvements. They didn't want to put any thought into changes because, well, that would require effort and time and commitment and risk. Yes, risk. Many people will not attempt to make improvements on anything because they're afraid of the risk. Well, what if I try and I fail? Or what if I try to do that and someone else doesn't like it? Or nobody appreciates it or no one gets it or no one understands? Or what if, what if I do all that work and no one cares? Better to just keep things the way that they are. You have to decide what kind of a person you're going to be. Are you going to be the person that tries to make the wheel better when they can? Tries to make improvements on existing solutions, tools, what have you, ways of doing things? Or are you going to be the person that tells other people, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Slow down there, buddy. Don't think too hard. Have you ever? Has anyone ever told you that? Has anyone ever said, whoa, whoa, whoa you're, you're, you're thinking too hard. You're thinking too hard. Can it be, can that be true? Is it possible to think too hard? Hmm. I don't know about thinking too hard. There is such a thing as overthinking something. But what you have to do when you find yourself in that position, whether it's at work or at home or in a professional relationship or whether you're just being creative, you have that little conversation with yourself. So you say, am I legitimately overthinking this? Am I trying to reinvent the wheel? Or is there a way for me to make the wheel better? All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to treat a family member or a friend or a child, uh, you, know, you have an adult child or a child who's in high school or junior high, and you want to give them a leg up on life, purchase them the book, Morning Mindset, A 30-Day Plan for a More Positive and Productive Life. I bet you they'll enjoy it. I bet you they'll get something out of it. If you'd like a signed copy, you can go to morningmindsetpodcast.com. Follow the links, and it'll take you where you need to go. And if you don't want a signed copy and you don't care anything about that, you just want the book and you want it fast, go to Amazon.com, and you can get it prime shipping, and bing, bang, boom, it'll be to you in a couple of days. You can wrap it up and give it as a gift to someone you really care about. And even if you don't buy anyone a book, even if you don't buy a coffee cup, if you believe that there's someone else in your life that could benefit from positive and productive talk and thinking, turn them on to the show. Leave us a review. Let people know about the Morning Mindset Podcast. All right, that's it. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of you. Happy New Year and all that good stuff. I am your host, Paul Markle, and I will talk to you again real soon. Thank you for spending time with us today. To get show notes, submit a topic request, and for more from your host, Paul G. Markle, visit morningmindsetpodcast.com. That's morningmindsetpodcast.com. Please leave a review for this podcast on your favorite podcast player. We appreciate your time and effort, and we look forward to reading your honest feedback.